today on Dr. Phil. My dad stole my inheritance. I did not steal my kids' inheritance. They can wait till I croak, and they get theirs. Grandma left her nothing. There was a will in which they were named originally, correct? Yes. You think he manipulated her into changing the will? I do. And she had to buy a family heirloom. You negotiated to sell this to your daughter? Hey, the facts are the facts. Why would you do that? I make 75 bucks. You totally negated what she wanted. I did not negate it. You're taking away from your daughters. I wish they could stop wishing. This family drama is just getting started. He is spending my inheritance, chasing a dream. My whole family thinks I'm crazy to be pursuing a woman 30 years younger than me. The old mail order bride from the Ukraine comes into play. We seem to hit it off, and she's hot. Does she have a sexy voice? I don't know. I haven't talked to her. Let's do it. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. I'll try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Now, behind this attractive family lies a list of grievances you couldn't even imagine. Divorce, cheating, drinking, name-calling, and even a mail-order bride in the Ukraine. <laughs> but the biggest source of contention that has divided this group is all over a will left by Grandma. One daughter, Lisa, says her dad stole all of her inheritance. This dispute has left this family apart. We have Lisa, who is on mom, Kathy's side. We have her sister, April, who is siding with dad, Carl. Now, meanwhile, Lisa's other sisters, Jennifer and Sierra, say they feel caught in the middle. So let's start by hearing from Lisa and her parents, Kathy and Carl. Take a look. My grandmother passed away almost five years ago. My grandma was a wonderful person. We were her life. A number of years before my mom passed away, she told me how she set up her will. I saw a copy of her will. Carl would get 75% of the estate, and our daughters would inherit the remaining 25%. My mother asked me how I felt about that, and I told her I felt it was wrong. My mom listened to what I said, and she changed her will. When my mom died, I inherited approximately $275,000. My dad stole my inheritance. It infuriates me. It's beyond selfish. I did not steal my kids' inheritance. When I think about that, I feel angry, disgusted, mortified. It's none of her business. I don't like her interfering in something that's not anything to do with her. We've been divorced 14 years. N-O-Y-B. I know my grandma, and I know that she would never want to leave us with nothing. He told me that he was going to decide when and if they should get the money. I call Kathy a 160-pound mosquito because a mosquito will bite you and irritate you, and I feel like that's what she's doing. She calls me up, argues with me. It's like this, nee, nee, nee. I don't like it. I would not put it past my dad that there was a sum of money to be given to us, and he just kept it for himself. The bottom line of the mother's will is I want people to stop talking about it. I inherited it. They can wait till I croak, and they get theirs. Okay, so Lisa, you, you actually believe that he has stolen your inheritance. A and how do you think he went about this? How did he do this? How did he steal your inheritance? I absolutely think that he manipulated the will to get all of it, and it, the, the money bothers me. The money absolutely, like, I, it'd be great if I had something to help me out with, you know, or I did three, four years ago. But it's mainly the fact that he disrespected what grandma wanted, and you're taking away from your daughters, you know? You're like taking something that was given to us and keeping it for yourself. I feel like that's really selfish. In 2005, she asked me what I thought of it, and I said, Mom, I don't think it's right. I don't agree with it. You can do what you want, 
But I said, our whole family and everybody I know leaves it to their offspring. Doesn't jump a generation. And I don't remember the 25%. I'm sorry. I thought it was 50-50, 50, 50, 50 divided by you four kids. See, that's and the so, whole... Wait a minute, let me finish. Oh, sorry. And so she then changed it. She didn't tell me she changed it until afterwards when I got the copy of the trust. It was made co-trustee, executor of the will, everything else. And I try to help out when I can. I gave you $1,000 back a while, the part that you didn't pay back. I am I'm using that to try to invest it and not lose it and keep it so long that it, when I die, there'll be enough left to make you guys happy. And I absolutely appreciate that. But see, the thing <clears throat> is, I never knew what the whole situation was. It was also hush-hush. Well, and I'm trying to figure out what it was because you originally told our production assistant uh, Manolo, that your mom left a quarter to the girls. <laughs> then no, told, you oh, told yeah. our producer, Allie, that three quarters was left to the girls. Then you told segment director John that 50% was left well, to I the girls. I might have misstated meaning three quarters to me. But as I remember, because like I say, when somebody's asking me questions in front of a camera, it's like, how much did you get? I don't even... Well, I, we're just trying to get the story. I mean, yeah, I don't, as far I, as I can remember... She didn't leave anything to me, so I, it, I didn't have... I mean, it. Even, even, if it was, even if it was either. 75 to me, 25 to them, she asked me what I felt about it. You saw the will. I s A yeah. will. And I, don't even, I don't even know how she saw the will. I did see a binder, and it said that they got three... Uh, he, Carl got three quarters, and they got a quarter. Okay, we're talking about several hundred thousands of dollars a year, so I mean, it's a significant amount of money, but so you saw at that time three quarters to him, one quarter to you. To, to the to to the girls. Up. To we be split all, up so among the girls. Got one sixteenth. Right, right, okay. So, but then when she did pass, and I'm sorry for your loss, by the Thank way. You. It's, so, when, when she did pass, and, and you all suffered the loss, then the will. <clears throat> comes out and it all goes to you except five thousand dollars which went to you correct the ex daughter-in-law yes but so no. you get nothing ex daughter-in-law gets five thousand bucks and the rest goes to you correct and me and my grandma were really really close and it just it bothers me that you totally negated what she wanted I it did not matter. negate it she but, asked what I felt about it, and I'm telling you, and I told her how I felt. I'm just saying that I wish Grandma's wishes would have been... Well, I guess her ultimate through. wishes were fulfilled. Well, Didn't see, I don't, she put her wishes in her will? That's what I thought, yes. But see, I don't even really and know the amended. story. It's all been so <laughs> Nobody's hush -hush. ever saw the will. No one's ever seen it. <clears throat> I just want to kind of figure out what happened. You that's think it. he manipulated her into changing the will? I, I do. I do. Are you saying he like stood on her air hose until she changed it, or do you think he conned her into changing it? What are no, you saying? I think no. he convinced her. I think he did. I think he convinced because her. Because my grandma, my this is her only son, and they were also very close, only and she child. respected and trusted him. Right. You know, and wanted his opinion. So I think that whatever he said went. There was a will in which they were named originally, correct? Yes. And then you talked yeah, to her, talked and, to and you said, I think you should change it. Right. I was up there visiting, and, and so I said, you, you, just, said, yeah, I think you, you should decide change what it. you want to do. But I said, this is the way I feel, because she asked how I felt. And I was living in California. She was in Portland, so I couldn't stand on her air hose. And uh, it was, you know, <laughs> it's to the point, I'll let them read all these documents if they want. I don't care. Right. The other thing I wanted to mention is that I pretty much made her investment decisions for her since my dad died in 1974. So I felt like I had increased her assets to the point where, you know, <laughs> that's just the way I felt. I felt like I was the man and, and the man in charge, and I was her son, and that's it. Well, you said you had read my book, Life Code, mm -hmm. and I, I, I coined a term in there called baiter. You, you said <laughs> that you felt like yeah. he was a baiter. Yeah, I do. And, and a baiter, I mean, you can read it right here. It's a term that is backstabber, abuser, imposter, taker, exploiter and reckless and it's kind of something that goes beyond different diagnoses and you said you felt like he fit this term i do to me absolutely and, and then you say that he stole your inheritance you say, oh i don't want to be too harsh but yet you say i think he's a backstabber abusing imposter taker exploiter and reckless yeah that's pretty harsh it is it is harsh <laughs> so you feel that way about him i think that he's that way with me i do well, there's another sister here. There's more than one sister, as we said up front.
Uh, she does not feel that way about her dad at all. And in fact, she says that Lisa has no business digging into his financial or personal affairs and that she just needs to just back off. We're going to meet her next. I completely support my dad. Lisa says that my dad has stolen her inheritance, but in reality, it's his inheritance. I would describe my sister Lisa as a superficial, self absorbed drama queen. And later, for two and a half years, I've been using an international dating website. I'm interested in girls from Ukraine. My whole family thinks I'm crazy to uh, be pursuing a woman 30 years younger than me. The way that I look at it is that he is spending my inheritance chasing a dream that's not going to happen. Before my grandma passed away, she told me that I could have this really big, beautiful mirror that used to hang in her house. I love it, and it always reminded me of her. After my grandmother passed away and I asked my dad about getting the mirror and bringing it home, he told me that he was planning on selling it on Craigslist for $150 and that if I wanted it, I was going to have to pay him $150 for it. I couldn't believe it. I honestly thought he was joking. I was able to negotiate him down to $75. When I think about having to pay for a family heirloom, is disgusting. Really? <laughs> I guess it was really. You're... Whatever happened to that mirror? So your mother, you sold it to your daughter, apparently. So you, your mother has a, a mirror in her house that has sentimental value to your daughter. I don't know why, but... Well, it doesn't matter why. It does. And you, here's the mirror. You see it right here? It's hanging. Right. You just saw it a few weeks ago for Christmas or a couple months yeah, ago. Yeah, I thought you had it. And so you, you negotiated to sell this to your daughter? I guess so. <laughs> hey, the facts are the facts. Why would you do that? Well, I guess to make 75 bucks. <laughs> I feel like he wouldn't have done that if it was with <clears throat> April or Sierra. Like, April got that cool no, chair. I, I mean, I wanted, I'm just trying to understand. I'm really trying to understand here. Well, it was why, probably wrong. But How's why, that? Why, why did it seem like a good idea at the time? I have this mirror. It's obviously of no value to you. Well, if I sold it for 150 it's 150 <laughs> bucks for something that was hanging on my mother's wall for 30 years. And it's no different than me selling all her furniture and stuff. And Kathy got a big percentage of that for doing that, helping out with all that sale. As far as the mirror goes, you know, it's something I've totally forgotten about. I could be totally wrong in, in doing it. And I make mistakes. Lisa's sister, April, says the inheritance money belongs to their dad and no one else should feel entitled to it. Basically, we have two camps. We have Lisa and her mom versus April and I. I completely support my dad. I always have my dad's back. They definitely have each other's backs. They will lie for each other, too. Have you talked to Lisa or Neil? Uh, no, I don't talk to Neil. Have you talked to Jen? I don't talk to Lisa, either. April and I have a better relationship than I do with my other daughters. I think that my sister, Lisa, and my mother are trying to make my dad look like he's greedy and self-serving. Lisa says that my dad has stolen her inheritance, but in reality, it's his inheritance. Of course she's going to say that because my dad helps her out financially. He gives her money. She's the one reaping the benefits. I would...
describe my sister Lisa as superficial, self-absorbed. I feel like she's nice to my face, but then goes to my dad and talks behind my back. They need to come to me and talk about what's bugging them and what's being fed to them from their mother. They're constantly talking about me or my mom. It's like, Row! Lisa is a drama queen. Lisa blows everything out of proportion, and my mother is on the bandwagon because she's bored with her life. April and I have never really seen eye to eye. Growing up, my mother was incredibly abusive. My mother used to lock me in closet. She would hit me with belts. April thinks I'm a bitch. The sound of her voice makes me cringe. <laughs> when I think about my mom, I feel like I want to punch her in her face. <laughs> what I want from my mom is to go jump off a cliff. Uh, what do you think about your dad uh, selling the sister, your superficial sister, this mirror? <sighs> I mean, she had to pay 75 bucks to look at herself. From what I heard. <laughs> from what I heard, Lisa says that my grandma said that she could have the mirror. I don't know if that's the case or not. She brought up this chair that I have that's probably worth $15. Did you throw down three fives for the chair? No. I did yeah. not throw down three fives for the chair. You didn't have to pay for it? What, what do you think about him selling her the mirror? I think it's because the mirror is... Valuable. I think the frame on it is made out of something valuable so that it has some worth. Really? God, you guys think about this so differently than I do. Me too. I, yeah. I just, so it's all like, about the money. I'm shocked. Can I, can I throw something out? You know, we talk about, about money. not yeah. giving her things. I gave her my mom's engagement and wedding ring thing. Okay, maybe it's worth a grand. You know? Did you ever bring that up? Yes. You know, yes, actually, I did. she did. I she, did. That was the first thing she talked about, okay, actually. Okay, well, good that, for you. That, that, you, that you gave her that. You, get you, a, know you get why? an atta girl. Well, do you know why? First of all, I gave Sierra the actual wedding band because I thought she deserved it. Because she was really close with Grandma. And I know me and Sierra, all of us had, were really close with her. But I know particularly, I think we had a more of a special connection. You gave me that because I was holding her hand when she died. Mm -hmm. I know that. And I called you and, and said, I, come and down I, here. I said, to, I, I couldn't. You couldn't because you were drinking. I, was, I, had, I had gotten a DUI. I was on probation. And I had two glasses of wine. Yeah, but Dad, it was three miles down the street. No, it isn't. It's eight miles. Okay, well, you could have gotten a cab, but I'm calling you bawling, yeah, saying okay. your mom is dying right. in front of I me was right in there now. For two and a half hours just before that. Right, but that doesn't and matter. Only, She's the dying only right now. The reason you got there then was because you were late. She would have died before. Dad, I was at work. I was working a double shift. I told you that I'm going to come during my break. As soon as I got off work, I went down to the hospital. I was there. My thought was I was going to be there for an hour visit with her and then go back to work. I didn't know that she was going to pass away well, right there. Well, I didn't there. either. And by you telling me 15 minutes before she did, there was no way I was going to get there in time anyway, even if well, I Well, even if you didn't it. get there in time, at least you could have been there to help support the situation, be there as her <sighs> son and as my dad, to kind of help, you know, nurture and comfort and all I that other stuff. I guess that's, why I, did the, that's the why I did for the two and a half hours earlier when the doctor said she couldn't understand anything I was saying. And when I said, Mom, do you know that we all love you and can you hear what I'm saying? And she's hooked up to her morphine, and she went. See, so she did know. She did know because she did the but same thing. But they said she was me. pretty much brain dead. Well, she wasn't brain dead. Well, I know exactly. And I and thought she was going to live longer than that day. Me too. Anyway, I can't go back and go through that. I can't I know, change that. I know, but I want that. you to just acknowledge that. Like, I just would like for you to acknowledge. I that. told you a million times, Lisa, that it was so wonderful that you were there. But I was sorry you went through it alone. I I know, but I wish that you. Stop wishing. <sighs> I stopped wishing a long time ago, Dad, honestly. Like, that's why we're here. There was a will. I felt like there was some shadiness, like something You want to come over and look at the damn papers? I got them in a bookcase. I you want to read the Dad, whole 300 pages. And later, you think he's getting catfished. There's obviously someone on the other end writing letters. But I'm not stupid. But you, when you went to meet Natalie, she wouldn't meet you. Somebody tell me again why we're here. <laughs> are we here talking about money? Or are we here talking right, about I, relationship? Are we here talking about your resentment of fact that everything. he seems to not plug in to you yes. emotionally? Yes. What, what are we here about? Honestly, I think the money aside, the will, I feel like, is not even... I felt there was a little deception there. It, and everything, the whole ball of wax sucks. But I feel like that's not the main focus. Here's the main the focus... Is, though, had you ever asked Dad, show me these documents, he would have shown them to you. 
April, we were going to have a conversation, but you told Dad that get ready, they're about to, you know, they're going to attack. They're going to attack you. When did I say that? <clears throat> Before it happened, and so Dad said, "Oh, I got my guns blazing. We're going to have this go on." But it was during Christmas time. Who said this? And I didn't. That well, that's because we agree to disagree How would you so know? much. Well, there, because I was a part of the decision. There, you weren't. He he, he did there. provide us documents uh, concerning the will and just to to just give you the long and short of it. Yeah. Um, there 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 was a will, and he was named in the will. Um, as the co-conservator, I mean, there was a. I mean, here it is. This this was dated back October fourth, two thousand five, uh, um, and it says, "Upon my death, trustee shall distribute the following specific gift." And person, Catherine, your, your mom, specific gift, five thousand dollars. Yeah. It says, "I give the rest and residue of my trust to Carl," and then it says, "If Carl." Let me look at it here. Look at it here. I see it. No, right here. You can see it really big. I pulled out the key parts for you. If Carl predeceases me, then my trustee shall distribute the rest remaining in equal shares to the then surviving lineal descendants of Carl, is the children. I mean, it would have gone all to you at that point. So if he dies before her and then she dies, then it goes to the children. So there was just a, a natural progression. Now, there were some more details in there, but. That's kind of the. And that's fine. I felt like there was some shadiness, like something. You that want wasn't to come over and look at the damn papers? I got them in a bookcase. I you see, want to read the yeah, whole 300 I see them. pages. I see them. I, I even asked a, a, a preeminent uh, will and trust lawyer to join us today. A state attorney, Ann Margaret uh, Carosa, is is here to talk about this. And you you believe that he had the right to have this conversation with his mother, right? Yes. And isn't it also good public policy? It's kind of in line with the mores and folkways of our society that wealth is passed on generationally. Absolutely. So it's not bizarre. I mean, if, if they went to court and said, well, Judge, we're here because this mother passed her wealth on, wait for it, to her son, the judge is not going to go, what? <laughs> I mean, that's good public policy. It's mores and folkways of the society, right? That's the norm, except here we have a change, that there was a point in time where grandma did specifically name these granddaughters. And how did this change come about? Again, if Carl represented that this money is as good as in Fort Knox with me and the <clears> girls are ultimately going to get it, uh, that's terrific. Yeah, but isn't his story going to go a lot better since he's the only one telling it? I, I think you're, again, you're going to look at the change in the circumstances. Carl said today that he wasn't even aware of this change until after it happened. Uh, that would be highly unusual because if the 05 change named you as a co-trustee, you would have had to sign that at the time of the document right. for it to be valid. And I did. So you said earlier that you only heard about it after the change. So I, I think there's a, a little issue here. It was signed, uh, I don't remember when, but it was, I was uh, in California, and it was signed later when I went up to Oregon, where she lived. And, uh, but she had said later, after I had this discussion with her, that she said, OK, I agree with you. That's what I'll do. She said, I see your point. So will there be something there? Well, hang on. This family drama is just getting started. Not only are Lisa and Kathy upset over the will, they also think that old Carl might just be doing what I was suggesting, wasting this inheritance money on something that they think is beyond bizarre. And this is where the old mail order bride, as they call it, from the Ukraine comes into play. That's right. Carl is in love with Natalia. Is, is that how you pronounce it, Natalia? She likes the English, Natalie. Natalie. Natalie, and uh, he has traveled overseas several times to try to meet her. Try to meet her. So is he getting his money's worth? Well, we'll talk about all that when we come back. I'm interested in girls from Ukraine. 
I've been to Ukraine twice. When I met Natalia online, we seemed to hit it off. And she's hot. When I got to Ukraine, Natalia had to leave the country. I've offered her small amounts of money. My whole family thinks I'm crazy. They are not looking for love with him. They are looking for a ticket to the United States. We're talking to a family divided over an inheritance. Now, on the one side are Lisa <laughs> and her mother, Kathy, who feel that Carl may have tampered with his mother's will before she died in order to gain most of her inheritance. Now, I, you've not been specific about how you think he tampered with it. He says, yes, I talked to her about it years in advance and told her I thought she should change the will. Well, April supports her father and feels he has every right to do whatever he wants with the money. But Lisa insists her father is a sexist who doesn't respect women and is wasting the inheritance on a possible catfish scam with a Russian <laughs> mail-order bride. Yeah, this show is just getting started. <laughs> Take a look at this. For two and a half years, I've been using an international dating website. I'm interested in girls from Ukraine. I've been to Ukraine twice. The first time I went to Ukraine, I met three women. We didn't click. So I came back home, got back on the website, found a good-looking lady named Natalia. When I met Natalia online, we seemed to hit it off. Everything from our jobs to what we like in looks, music, pretty much everything. And she's hot. I wanted to meet Natalia, so I went back to Ukraine. When I got to Ukraine, Natalia had to leave the country for two weeks to Turkey. She stood me up. I told Natalia, now you play by Carl's rules. You learn English and you pay your own flight over here. Natalia's going to come visit me two times last year, and she found out her passport expired. Next time, the tax inspector says, you don't have your taxes up to date. I've offered her small amounts of money, and she never accepted me. Natalia speaks Russian, and I've been studying to learn how to speak Russian. I can say things like, I would like something to eat. Ya hai teleba stunya but weep it. Ya leublu Natalia. I love Natalie. <laughs> For two years now, the only way Natalie and I can communicate is through the agency with a girl named Susan translating. I pay $5 per letter. I've written 215 letters back and forth with Natalie. My total of the two trips was $6,000. My whole family thinks I'm crazy to uh, be pursuing a woman 30 years younger than me. They are not looking for love with him. They are looking for a ticket to the United States. I think it's fine. If he wants to meet people in Ukraine, do your thing. I have seen enough Dr. Phil catfish episodes. He sits in a cubicle in Nigeria. No, he does not. His hair is sticking up out of the picture. Whether he's getting drained financially, I know he's getting drained emotionally. My mother will say to my dad, Oh, Carl, have you talked to your teenagers recently? To me, it's kind of a fantasy that he's going to see unicorns and rainbows and lollipops, and his life is going to be the best it's ever been. I believe she's real. The agency says she's real. Her interpreter claims she's real. The way that I look at it is that he is spending my inheritance, chasing a dream that's not going to happen. You are out there. <laughs> you are, she, she's out there. She's a space cadet. She's a space cadet. The, the Natalie's going to take her inheritance or hers or anybody else's. I've already discussed with her two years ago, if we were to ever get married, she says, I totally agree with you that you should have a prenuptial agreement. Your kids should get what you've earned. There's no reason that I should get any. I don't deserve it. And she said, I agree that once we're married, what we earn together is what they get. And I said, you'd have to sign this prenuptial to say everything goes to them. I said, I have a will for my kids. She said, that's fine. She says, I don't want you to offer me money. I don't want you to send me money. She's told me that at least 10 times, at least. <laughs> so it's not like these people that blow their 500 grand and say, eh, I thought he was my lover. No. <laughs> she have a sexy voice? <coughs> I don't know, I haven't talked to her. <laughs> because you're the hot chick. <laughs> Never uh, talk to her? Great. No, mm. because she's only learning English. She takes two classes a week in English. You've supposedly. never talked to her in Russian? I've Ru never talked mean, to her. Never, you never heard her say anything in Russian? Not a single word. <laughs> could, 
It's all been letters. <laughs> okay, now, come on, listen. Forget it. Forget about these people. Okay. Just come on, okay. just one old boy to another, okay? okay? This is, this is 2015. Mm -hmm. I could pick up a cell phone and call anybody in the world right now. It's not well, believe like... Believe me, I'm totally skeptical. I told okay, her I can but, only but, trust her halfway till I meet her. Okay, but come on. How, in two years, you've never heard her voice? Correct. When you went to meet Natalie, she wouldn't meet you. She <laughs> slipped the turkey, supposedly. Oh, come on. I'm, I'm determined to prove all these people wrong. Okay. <laughs>this Natalie went to Turkey for two weeks her interpreter said she yeah, you went over there to meet her right mm -hmm. when you went to meet Natalie she wouldn't meet you right she wasn't there for two weeks and then when she came back Did she, she know you were coming years. yeah and then when you got there <laughs> she slipped to Turkey supposedly oh come on what do you what do you I'm, okay I'm a trusting person and sometimes I could be a fool <laughs> but you know what I'm, I'm determined to prove all these people wrong Okay. <laughs> But you said you said you couldn't drive to go meet Lisa when when your mom was in in the hospital because you couldn't drive because you'd been drinking because you've had a DUI right correct and you've had actually not one DUI but two three DUIs three. okay so you drink some yeah every day okay and and I've said many a time there are, there needs to be a breathalyzer on keyboards I swear <laughs> there does. but drinking and you, emailing you, you you sit home on this keyboard and and you go back and forth with her and, and you write letters to her right correct about two a week okay and you here's her profile page I mean she she says she's in Odessa Ukraine English basic and she says she's a is that a financier? Is that supposed well, to be supposed financier? Financier. She owns a company supposedly called the Business Center. Right. <laughs> she owns a company called the Business Center, but she can't. Okay, language skills. I can read and write with a dictionary, but can't speak. Okay, we've seen her picture, so we know that she's a, a very attractive young woman. And you, you trade emails with her, right? Mm-hmm. And you, you write to her, and you've, you've written her love letters. You say, hello, my honey. Uh, Natalie, first, I really like your letter. I think it was the longest letter in our two years. Mostly, I worry you will change your feelings about how I look compared to you, the age thing. I truly develop a bond together with you, emotions. And every time I write you a letter, I try to express both me and my emotions and to give each letter an atmosphere so you can feel my presence almost like I'm there. So you're going to do this through letters, but and then she writes to you, but she writes to you in Russian. My dearest Carlito, my honey, do you know the meaning of this word as of the sweet thing used instead of sugar? Funny when I say it in Russian. I'm not sure I still want to hear your sex stories, actually. I mean, you can tell me jokes, but not the stories from your life. Do you not know why it somehow makes me feel jealous? Of course I sent the letter to Santa Claus, or Father Frost, as we call him here. Did you know that? I think about life with you, I really do. It's just that no matter how much you think and plan in theory and practice, it's always different, always. Do you not agree with me? now? How do you read those letters that they come in Russian? She, she writes them, and this Suzanne, Susan, in, uh, interprets them. She's, uh, she knows English and Russian. So I write in English, Susan interprets them, but I know she's interpreting them the way I wrote, because when Natalie writes back, she's answering my questions, not some off-the-wall thing that uh, didn't pertain to what I wrote. So your English to Russian, um, to English... And then it's, she writes in Russian. You Susan pay five bucks a letter to get those translated yeah, for times her two hundred and fifteen letters. So you spent a thousand seventy-five dollars translating these letters. Over two me. and a half years, right? Well, wow. sure as hell beats a hundred-dollar date with some chick that wants to take me for a two hundred-dollar dinner.
You know, hey, now I kicks her ten dollars a week it's doing a real, this. Real like interaction with a woman, yeah. you know, and it's going out. And well, this something. is as good as it gets for now, and like I said, I could fail miserably at this. Where was she when you went over to see her? Supposedly in Istanbul on business. Why wouldn't she stick around the house? Well, she that's, a, that's in the back of my mind. Oh, right. I, I'm not stupid. <laughs> hey, I'm not stupid. <laughs> You think he's getting catfish? There's obviously someone on the other end writing letters. Don't you think in two and a half years something would have happened along those lines? <laughs> you you say you think he's getting catfish, and by catfish, if, if y'all haven't seen it, we're talking about people that run love scams on people over the internet, and they do have an MO where they start. Getting money. But don't you think in two and a half years something would have happened along those lines? I do think he's getting, there's obviously someone on the other end writing letters, but I'm more worried about him getting catfished emotionally and putting all of his eggs in this basket. Well, you, you understand, there is an MO that these people follow. And sure. If, if you look, um, they, the, these are the typical things that they talk about. And if you, if you look at this, um, you, one of her excuses, they always come up with excuses for why you can't meet them. Uh, she said that she was on a business trip. Uh, she said she couldn't come uh, because she had a problem, expired visa, passport, can't get out of the airport, uh, stuck in a foreign country. Uh, she said due to unrest, she said there was too many, there's bomb problems in Kiev. Uh, she couldn't get there. No, com no computer uh, video chat uh, capability. I mean, you just go through here already, you, you start seeing, you have to start, she's starting to hit an awful lot of things here that you're coming up with that she's, you know, I'm stuck in Turkey, I can't travel, it's, it's too dangerous in Kiev. Uh, my passport's expired. She's, she's told you she's got taxes that she has to pay. She's stuck. She can't go because taxes are paid. Some of these things, I mean, she's certainly showing up with problems that show up typical. I mean, this is what the FBI and the Interpol tells you to start. I mean, you just got to know. I understand that. And when you went over there, did you get along okay? Did you have any problems when you got over there? Well, other than uh, language, but I, a lot of people do speak some English. Uh, I got along fine with the other two girls. One I didn't like, one I did. Um, and uh, I, had, I had fun. I met a Swedish guy in my hotel. We went out and partied hard, you know, for a <laughs> week. <laughs> of course. I told you, I drink every day. What am I going to do? <laughs> and, um, but I was very disappointed that she didn't come to my hotel. I asked, I got a hold of her through Susan with about three days to go on my trip, and I said, you can come to my hotel. You don't have to get arrangements from the management of the um, dating site. And so she said, no, it's true. And so, uh, you know, it's okay. Das Vidanya, I'm going back home. And uh, that's when she wrote and wanted forgiveness, and that's when I said, you need to learn English and pay your own way over here, period. And she said, I'll do it. So we'll see. And she was supposed to come. September, then... Uh, didn't make it. Toward Christmas, right? Didn't make it. Passport. Then it was, didn't get the passport till November. Then they wouldn't, uh, then she couldn't go before that, all that, because all the violence in Kiev, that's where they have to go to the U.S. Embassy in Kiev uh, to get their interview for a visa for travel. And then it was um, the tax inspector, as they call them, said that she has to catch up on her taxes, otherwise we're not going to let you go because you could go to the United States and not pay your taxes. Yeah, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> I do, too. <laughs> All right, next, we're going to find out why Carl says he will keep paying to go to the Ukraine to find the love of his life, but he won't go to Mexico for his own daughter Lisa's wedding, which is coming up. We'll be right back. Well, we have run out of time. Now, you would think after an inheritance squabble and a Russian mail-order bride drama, we'd be done here. But, oh, no. 
There is a whole lot more. You're going to find out why Carl flat out refuses to attend his daughter Lisa's upcoming wedding. And get this, why Carl actually doubts that he's the father of Lisa and her twin sister Jennifer. We are just getting started. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. My dad is probably not coming to my wedding in Cancun, Mexico. I don't want to spend $1,500 to go to a wedding. They fight. There's no way that I can spend three months' rent to go to Mexico. And fight. I think you guys have a drinking problem. I think there's a few of us in this family that have a drinking problem. Are you drunk today? Like and fight. Are you nuts? I never said yes, that. You no, did. I didn't. Yes, you did. When did I say Do that? Do not lie. You have serious issues with your mother. Can't stand her. But no one's prepared. You once told him not to call you dad. For dad's shocking accusation. You question whether Jennifer and Lisa are your daughters. I have had my doubts. That's tomorrow. I'd like to thank all of my guests today. A special thanks to Estate Attorney Ann Margaret Carroza. Log on to drphil.com and share your thoughts on our message boards. You can also find me on Facebook and Twitter using hashtag drphil or hashtag divided over money. We'll see you tomorrow.